Hello everyone, Daim Shabazz, The Chess Drum here, and I want to give my impressions of the World Championship match, which ended yesterday with Magnus Carlsen defending his title for the fourth time. Now he's a five-time world champion, and he actually did a tweet with Kobe Bryant giving the five, uh, holding his hand up, indicating five championships and that came up in the press conference and certainly it became uh, one of one of those that um, people liked and maybe uh, he got a few extra style points for that uh, but be that as it may he went out certainly in style winning the match uh, in a very convincing and dominant fashion as far as Jan Nepomaniachi, winning the Canada's tournament is no easy task, and he was able to do that. But the question would be, would he be stable enough to play at this level over a 14-game uh, match? Magnus Carlsen, before the match, said some things about his opponent, and he also made some relative comments about how it would have been more difficult to face Caruana or Ding Loren. But the first five games were very uh, fiercely contested in terms of the tension that you felt. Game six, which was a decisive game, the first decisive game in five years at World Chess Championship level, and that quote was tweeted, it was stated in the broadcast, and everybody was talking about it. And they were saying, we have to have a new format because there are too many draws. So people were complaining about the draws. They were making all types of suggestions. They were criticizing the players. Although the games were very, very tense and very well played, the sixth game broke the streak and not only was decisive, became one of the most historic games in world championship history by eclipsing the Korchnoi Karpov, which was 124 moves, both Nepo and Carlson eclipsed that with 136 moves. It was actually Carlson Nepo, and Carlson playing white, and he had the rook and knight and two pawns versus the, the black queen. That game was played over a two-day period as it, not 48 hours, but it went over to 12, 17 in the morning. There were some other statistics associated with that game, but it was a historic game and it was well played. There were several stages within game six that we can, we, it has a lot of instructional content. And we talk about the imbalance of material, the queen versus the, the pieces, you know, the, the, the rook, the knight, and the pawns, which is very unusual. And it just so happens Nepo could have held the position if he had played perfectly, of course. So that game was historic. And so everyone was like, okay, now we're going to see how Nepo Maniachi reacts to this... Um, first first loss. So game seven was a very rather uneventful draw. Game eight came and we thought, okay, when is Nepo going to make his move? But no sooner than we, we could get into that thought, game eight was lost on a blunder. That was the queen a3 check hitting the a7 pawn uh, after b5, hitting the bishop on c4, Carlson played queen a3 check, king g8, queen takes a7, hitting the bishop on d7. Instead of Nepo playing bishop takes h3, he played queen d8, and ultimately went, in, went into an inferior ending and lost the game. So now he's down two games. And so we're all thinking, okay, that's a mountain to climb, but other players have come two games back. And then, of course, he, he had six games where he can 
try to make up the gap. Still insert, that's, that's a pretty big gap to fill. So then game nine. We come to game nine and we get into a very interesting game where Nepo has actually done well in the opening. But then he makes an inexplicable mistake, mistake of C5. And Carlson looking at the position, he looked and there was a shot of him shaking his head and squinting like, is this really happening? Then he plays C6, trapping the bishop on B7. Peace is lost. And then the continuation was H3, knight H6, rook E4. And, um, but the piece couldn't be saved. It was rook A7, rook to, uh, I think rook to B4, and then uh, queen to B8, then wins, wins the bishop. And... So that was a piece, that was a clear piece. So that's two games in a row. So now he's down three, he's down three games. And I emailed Dirk Van Guzendam of New and Chess and asked him, was he coming to the match? And he said, well, I, I was coming, but because of yesterday's result, I've canceled my plans. And so he decided not to make the trip because of that. Now, me personally, I, I was all set to go. I had made all kinds of plans, not only about the trip in Dubai, but I had to make personal arrangements. And so everything was already set up. And so I get here 2.30 in the morning of game 11, 2.30 that morning coming out of Amsterdam. And I get to bed, wake up at 1.30, I think I, I, you know, I ended up going to bed maybe around, probably around four, four o'clock before I got, got to bed, but I woke up at around 1.30 and so I slept because I wasn't able to sleep on the flight. And then I made my way over to the exhibition center where I saw the uh, expo. I rode the Metro, which was interesting. They have different cars they have one car for women for, for just women and it um it was an easy ride seven stops to the exhibition center and uh it was quite a spectacle but i had to go to the south hall and and and, and the game was already in progress i had to go get my accreditation my badge and so that took some time and by the time i got there they were around move 10 or 11 and I was able to see uh, some of the people that I've known, um, Maurice, who I've known for 30 years, and Sagar Shah of Chess Space India, uh, Mike Klein of Chess.com, all these people I've covered events with. And it, it, was, um, it was a good environment. It was, uh, it was an environment of excitement to see Vishy Anand commentating and to go into the room, this beautiful room that they've set up with these nice white chairs. Uh, it, there's something very different about being in person. This is my second world championship and I've covered six Olympiads. And being here on such a large stage is something that everyone should experience. And I would recommend it. Uh, but, you know, the emotions surrounding the game, being in the press room and, and listening to people talk, their conversations about the game and what they thought was going to happen. They're filing, they're writing their reports, and it's just interesting to, to, to get that, those reflections as the games are unfolding. But going to the press conference was also interesting because then you're able to interact with the players directly and get an idea of what they had on their minds. Now, during the tournament, there were some questions that were completely out of bounds and probably inappropriate. Some of them were not well thought out questions and some of them were just silly. But in the last press conference, Marisa Ashley extended it because this was the last one. So we wanted to make sure everybody got their questions in. And I asked both players if they thought that perhaps a different format 
of various disciplines would would be something they would they they would support. Well, Nepo said that he felt that having the different disciplines uh, would be his preference. Magnus Carlsen stated that he's been asked the question many times, and it depends on what you want to declare as best player or best player in classical or best player overall, uh, it depends. So, you know, it would be interesting if Fide thought about tweaking the format a bit because this is the first match where we've had 14 games in quite some time. We had 12 and they they extended it by two games, but it's it's ironic that everyone was complaining about the draws, and then they started complaining about the decisive games because they were coming um, due to blunders. And so you got drought, you, you had famine on one end, then you had the feast on the other. You had a famine of decisive results, then you had a feast. So which one is it? It's probably somewhere in between. But I think it would be interesting to, to look at other disciplines within the format. Uh, you can still have the separate champions, but for a world champion, you may want to have 960, Rapid, Blitz, Classical. Maybe you can weight them differently. Uh, I don't know, but I think it would certainly make the world championship match uh, a lot more exciting. It would make it unpredictable. And, it, you know, I think it, it would certainly say, okay, if you win the world championship in all of these disciplines, then you have to certainly be the best player on the planet. Um, but, yeah, it was a very interesting time. And um, I'm here for five more days, four more days, and I'm going to visit the expo probably all of those days. And I'm just going to show you, well, my room, first of all, from the Rove Dubai Marina, but I'm going to give you an idea of what I can see outside my window. So this is the view that I have. I'm not sure what this building is across, but it's very unique. You can see the boating, and there's the mall that's across the way. In fact, I'm about to go over there in a few minutes. This is the roadway. And of course, that's the entry to the Rove Dubai Marina. And down the street, and there's a beautiful mosque down the street that I passed coming from the metro. And this is it. It's Kind of a, an interesting location and very interesting uh, hotel room. Very interesting hotel. I actually did a video of the uh, where they have the table tennis and they have the foosball. They have a lot of uh, nice uh, features in this hotel. And uh, I certainly would recommend it. All of the Rove chain hotels are, are good. Uh, I couldn't get to the Rove Expo. That was uh, $231 a night. And I kind of like to get out and ride the public transportation anyway when I'm in a foreign country, if I can. And you get a chance to people watch a little bit and just to see how people conduct them, the locals conduct themselves in their, in their country. So I always find joy in that. But uh, again, this, this match was uh, very interesting. It was a bit anticlimactic after all of the, the losses, um, three losses in, in four games. And Nepo was gracious in his interviews. He was very calm. And I think that's the lesson that we should take away from this. And it will be a lesson for the ages and that you can lose, but you can still be gracious. You can be calm. You can be even, have an even temperament. Even if you're dissatisfied with your performance, um, you can still have the civility to uh, 
present yourself as someone who uh, is very, um, you know, this is certainly very open to um, criticism and who does not have these uh, illusions that, you know, it's someone else's fault that they lost. So we're looking forward to the future cycle. A lot has been made about Ali Reza Faruja. I think it's too early for that, but he, of course, has already qualified for the candidates. Uh, I believe there have been eight to qualify. Now, throwing Nepo Maniachi in that uh, pool as the vice champion, uh, he will be uh, also in that tournament. So this is, this is um, what I wanted to share with you. Uh, I'm going to be doing more reports on the Expo. So if you're interested in the Expo, I'll have those. Other than that, um, you can follow my reports on the Chess Drum. I have a World Championship report, which is going to be an overall view. And then I'll have a Reflections piece which I always do, that covers everything. Covers my trip, my travels here, through driving from Florida to Atlanta, to Amsterdam, to Dubai, all of my impressions, the things that I experienced, what I saw, uh, and it's usually, I have a lot of pictures and videos in it. It's kind of a photo essay. So hopefully you enjoyed this, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the World Championships and um, make sure you follow the chest drum and as i always say keep the beat going thank you